Um, I'm very excited to hand over to our esteemed new president and my friend and colleague, Klaus Kropp. Um, Klaus is a manager of the Lorisham Open Air Laboratory for Experimental Archaeology. He's a significant voice in the world of experimental archaeology and an active member of EXARC, as well as having been serving on the IEMA committee for some years now. He's also a prominent advocate, specialist and researcher in uh, the Draft Animal Power Heritage Community. And as many of you know, he convened the enormously successful Draft Animals Conference earlier in 2021. And we're not playing an, uh, an important role in steering our IEMA organization steadily and productively into the future. He's often to be found steering his heritage breeds to carve vital furrows into the grain of our agricultural past. And it's grain that he brings to us today with a fascinating, fascinating insight into the seed of new ideas that will help the IEMA continue to flourish under his presidency, as well as the finer details of a big new project called A Year on the Field. And this scheme is bringing museums, farms, research institutions, scientists, living history farms and archaeological open air museums from multiple countries together to document and research the cultivation and processing of wheat over the course of one year. So Klaus, it's over to you in more ways than one and speaking to the title, A Year on the Field, Connecting Museums, Farmers and Researchers Worldwide. Thank you, Oli. Just Dear ladies and gentlemen, sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, chers mesdames et messieurs, my name is Klaus Kropp. I am the manager of the so-called Laurisham Laboratory for Experimental Archaeology which is an archaeological open-air museum in southern Germany. It is with great pleasure that I am now able to introduce to you a freshly founded, brand new, so to speak, international cooperation project with the name A Year on the Field. The presentation itself will take about 15 minutes, and afterwards I am already looking forward to a lively discussion with all of you. So, first off, I hope you enjoy the presentation and talk to you soon. By means of an introduction, let me now first comment on this particular slide you see now. We have a series of six pictures and this seems like uh, we want to show the broad variety of different possibilities to plow farmland around the world and that is certainly true. We have both tractor-powered farms of the 21st century as well as ox or horse-powered farms um, in the 21st century, but also living history farms in the US represented here, as well as an archaeological open-air museum, be it Laura Sum in this case. All of this seems like a lot of differences. Different implements used, different power sources used, but what brings all of these different depicted farm operations and museum contexts together is a year on the field. A year on the field as a project does not only include the six before mentioned examples. It by now, and the number is still rising by the way, includes a set of more than 16 different archaeological open air museums, living history farms, and real farms around the globe that all joined forces to follow up one particular goal of this project, to document every single step of the cultivation cycle and the processing of one particular field crop, in this case, common wheat. This means that all of the participating growers, as we call them, sent in a pre-prepared set of forms, which include not only information about the area they farm in, but also the soil, the seeds, and then follows up in a diary, so to speak, what every single and particular step was that brought them to the harvest they will eventually get out of their fields. Meaning we document when and with what implements 
the fields were plowed, for example, we document the sowing process, the harrowing process, the weeding process, the harvesting process. All of these different steps within an arc, um, agricultural cycle and all of them are sent in and put in a database to store them and to, um, of course, um, work with these data sets afterwards. First, I want to highlight the global scope of this project. When I look at who joined the project already, I can happily say that we not only have contributing growers from Canada and the United States, as well as from Colombia, for example, meaning basically both North and South America, but also a broad set of different growers within Europe, but also Asia, including India. This means we will also be able to have a deeper look in different traditional growing techniques around the globe when it comes to wheat, differences which also influence the yield at the end of the cultivation cycle, differences that are connected to power source availabilities, for example. So we couldn't be more happy that with this first year on the field, um, this case study with common wheat, we already have that global scale we intended to have for this project. Another really interesting aspect of the project is the diachronic perspective we are able to follow up on. We have, as I already said, a set of archaeological open air museums on board as well as living history farms. And all of these institutions have one thing in common. They try to reconstruct construct or showcase different farming techniques in different eras, in different time periods. So with the project team as it is now, we can already um, focus on at least 3000 years of wheat cultivation and processing. And this is really fascinating. Um, as we will see so many different overlapping technologies, innovations, and other aspects, which make this such a vast and a very deep source of knowledge, which can be derived from all these different sites. There is one more aspect that highlights the extraordinary setting of this project as a whole. We do not stop as a project with documenting the cultivation and processing cycles. We also try to have a holistic as possible view on the topic we are focusing on, in this case, common wheat. So we are happy that we were able to include a set of experts and scientists from around the globe um, to contribute to our project and to bring in new perspectives, perspectives that follow up on the importance of wheat for human diet, contributions that focus on the really important question of gluten intolerance when it comes to wheat, but also we want to look at the well, sustainability of some of the small scale farming systems wheat um, is sometimes uh, included in, in different countries of this world, and also how this contrasts to industrial agricultures. Um, so we try to highlight every single aspect we have, bring it all together to have a holistic as possible view on the topic of common wheat and the topic of a year in the field as a whole. Let me start on that next slide by telling you a little anecdote from our first project meeting we had a couple of months ago. When we were introducing ourselves to each other, 
um, many of the group members, including me, were really stunned to see all of these different backgrounds and professions, as well as different regions of the world represented in this video call. And it was then that we realized this amazing opportunity we have with this project to actually bring together all of the before said, all of these different views and ideas and professions and make all of these people talk to each other and with each other, maybe for the first time ever. So this project became a network networking project right from the beginning. And I am very proud that we managed to bring in some of the really large umbrella organizations around the globe, be it Elfen, be it uh, EMA or Exarch, um, bring them in as partner for the projects because all of them represent different aspects of possible project partners, be it living history farms, be it archaeological open air museums or be it museums as a total and farming museums. And what we have now is these organizations as engines to bring in their members and associated members to contribute to this project. And I think when we use this great gift we have with this question and this focus on common weed and a year in the field and everything which involves this, we can really create an extraordinary opportunity of deep networking, which can strengthen not only these associations now involved, but also the individual project members. When the first filled out project forms were sent in, we realized that all of the information, all the intel we got from these forums and can derive from that, all of these different skills which are described there with pictures and videos and everything, that we have to see this also as our great power we have and also as an obligation and responsibility to not only describe these skills, but also to preserve them and to use these skills as a training source for future farming questions. Many of these traditional farming skills are not something from the past. They are something we need when we talk about a more sustainable agriculture in the future. And together with the fact that we bring in both 21st century farmers, as well as um, the interpretation of past farming systems with the living history farms and the archaeological, archaeological open air museums, we have this great potential to transporting these skills into a modern setting to adjust them accordingly and make them of value for today and tomorrow. In this case, we are happy that we um, were able to join forces with LFM's um, Skill and Preservation um, Committee, STP, um, which is basically focusing on both skill preservation and skill training, uh, using these skills as a resource to teach Alpha members um, so that these skills aren't lost. We can now happily say that Elfem is funding a skill preservation and documentation intern for the year in the field project. So we now have a trained and skilled farmer and um, a cinematographer, which basically uh, on a well high level with um, very good equipment can help us document preserving and um, basically transporting these um, skills into media formats which we can use on all our um, channels uh, and how we want to engage with the public. That being said, I now want to focus on my last slide 
on the possible ways and actual ways we decided to engage with the wider public, especially when we think about the global scale of our project. We decided that the core unit of this public engagement needs to be a well accessible, easy to reach website of the project. And this is what we have at our yearinthefield.net website. This features a project block, which is then again the nucleus of our um, engagement because it not only documents the progress of the project during the year, but also includes the guest contributions I was already talking about, be it uh, on um, well traditional weed varieties of Germany. This was something um, will be something we will be focusing on in the upcoming week. There are also contributions um, focusing on photographic essays of um, particular local traditions in rural England, for example, but also the aforementioned question of gluten intolerance as well as the role of wheat in human diet. Besides that website communication, we also have a, a newsletter people can subscribe to and which will then be sent around uh, three times a month to all uh, the subscribers. We also use the channels of social media to have a easy way to well raise attention of the project basically. This means both um, uh, Facebook in this particular case as well as Instagram. We also have our own YouTube channel. When it comes to the field of science and um, colleagues we want to reach out to. Um, we also will use the possibilities we have with conferences, with workshops, with uh, public digital talks, as well as written publications to reach out to uh, our um, public. I'm afraid I have to come to a conclusion for my little presentation. I hope that I was able to show you that the Year in the Field project is a project that has a lot of potential and it will be one of the main tasks of myself as well as the project partners and associations involved that we can follow up on this great responsibility and chance we have here to bring in together a large and a vast and a diverse group of people around the globe to engage, engage with each other as well as to help preserve really important skills we need for a brighter and a more sustainable future. Thank you for your attention. Thank right. you, Klaus. That was brilliant. Uh, and it's it's an absolutely fascinating project. Um, I want to just quickly, before before we uh, hand over to questions, um, draw everyone's attention to the, I put the link for the main project in, in the chat and Lena has just added a link to the, the newsletter. I was just going to add the link so that everyone can uh, find out how to sign up and get involved. And I wonder just as a quick um, st starter before other questions come into the chat, please pop questions in the chat if you would like to ask them. Um, Klaus, could you tell us a little bit about how to get involved uh, if, you, if, if people aren't already involved and, and what the different levels of involvement are? Yeah, thank you. That's a really good point. And um, basically, we have different options of participating in the project. Basically, as I was talking about most of the time, we have the, the section of growers, actual um, farms or farm operations, which have the chance to grow um, common wheat um, in the upcoming um, agricultural cycle. Um, this doesn't mean it has to be um, winter wheat. It can also be um, summer um, wheat. Um, so um, the only thing for now is that it has to be wheat. Um, we will, um, and I, I'm well optimistic that we will continue with the project in the future years too, we will then also be able to focus on uh, other field crops as well um, and therefore bring in new partners, new growers. Um, besides 
being an actual grower, there's always the possibility to become a regular contributor, meaning that um, over the course of the following year, um, those um, um, people would bring in um, from their perspectives um, um, repeatedly um, contributions for the block, uh, for example. Um, so um, when I take the, the field sex project, um, which is um, organized by the University of Oxford as well as Leicester, um, they will bring in a medieval perspective on growing wheat um, uh, throughout the year with contributions from archaeobotany and stuff like this. And the other thing would be if um, you think you might have one particular aspect which would be interesting for the project, you could always become a guest contributor. Uh, as Peter Shuri, for example, I was talking about, um, which contributed with his um, great um, paper on um, the importance of wheat in human diet. So that's possible ways of getting engaged. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, I'm not seeing any uh, questions in the chat yet. Um, but perhaps I'll follow up with a, an, another question. Um, I'm, I'm wondering uh, how this connects to the, the more recent past in relation to wheat and whether the, the sort of 20th century transformations as part of the Green Revolution are relevant to this class, partly because Sirajit has told me that the, the university that's going to host um, IEMA 2023 uh, was a site involved in, in that process and the, the sort of production of dwarf wheat. And I wonder whether you could comment on that more recent past. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, we want to, we want this project to be something that um, doesn't, although it might seem like that um, also in the presentation, uh, that it is something that is focusing um, on past agricultures. I mean, the fact that we also include modern agriculture, uh, agricultural farms um, and uh, also include actual discussions which are um, um, ongoing, like um, no-till agriculture, for example, and all of these different aspects. That is something key uh, to really make a change with this project. I mean, um, the, the whole project also follows um, the, the goal to give this discussion a louder voice. And this also includes the small-scale farmers in rural India, as well as um, uh, big farms uh, in, in the US. Um, we want to hear all of these different perspectives and we want to see if from these different angles, um, when I was talking about the holistic approach, um, we can actually gain um, knowledge and uh, make a change um, to something better. That's brilliant, really useful response. Um, I noticed that Cosette, who's one of our greatest advocates for, for networking and networks and has spoken about that uh, subject at, at previous IEMA uh, symposia is asking a, a very practical question about those networks and how often you will have participants Zoom meetings. I mean, we, um, we had two so far and we uh, were well, talking about it that we probably will have um, project meetings every other um, a month, so every two months, basically. Um, the big challenge, as always, with a global um, project is that uh, it always will be hard for somebody to participate because it's already too late or quite early. And so, um, I, as I was asking about uh, within the project group uh, about possible ways to um, get the discussion uh, liven up a little bit, um, we came across the idea to create a project intern um, discussion forum, which we already created and will soon introduce to the members. So everybody can take um, his or her time to uh, actually comment on a specific uh, aspect. I was really amazed when we had our first um, uh, email um, and there was a, a picture of, uh, of how um, to, to bind the wheat sheaves. Uh, and uh, this started a lively discussion with a thread of, I think, 20 emails of different perspectives. Well, this is how we do it. Um, well, this is how it's traditionally done in rural England in the 19th century. And this was exactly what I was, what I was looking for in that project. And to bring that in a little bit, well, better shape, and we decided that we will have this um, discussion forum. Uh, I didn't. I didn't bring Cosette in because I know that her internet connection is is a little unstable. But I, I wonder whether I can invite you, Sirajit, to ask your question directly. Thanks, Ali. Uh, 
my question is actually, I mean, since you have this really exciting uh, set of people who are there on the project, apologies for my voice, I've got a bad cold, I think I'm getting out of it. But, uh, so I was wondering if uh, as part of the project work, you would be doing a kind of in-depth interviews with some participants from different regions about going back a decade or two changes they've lived through and what they've made into their uh, you know uh, farming process itself mm -hmm. um yeah that that's a really uh, important um um aspect you're you're highlighting there and i i want to ask uh, or answer with a yes and of course um if you um uh, with your network uh, in india for example have um somebody in mind which could be useful to um actual um, interviews in that sense, um, uh, I would be happy to to set something up. What I actually did when it came to um, draft cattle use, um, I started a series of different interviews with farmers around the world uh, on their perspective on using draft animals. Uh, and uh, um, we're getting some really interesting responses um, to that, uh, including of uh, some um, um, wheat farmers in, in rural India and uh, we have a local partner there and uh, i think we can and should um, now that you highlight it again um, focus on more of these interviews because it can also be a great um, source of oral history basically i mean when you think about um, past conferences of aima um, we had one particular presentation there which was focusing um, on um, uh, African-American um, uh, oral history and, and records of farmers. Um, and this is really, really fascinating um, uh, intel uh, and really valuable uh, also for the discussion in the year in the field, not only focusing on uh, common wheat, um, but um, uh, for the discussion as a whole. And I think, uh, Vijay, you have a follow-up question. Are you happy to come on and ask that? Yeah, sure. Thanks, uh, Oli. Um, well, who's this India partner and where exactly they're located in India? Which part? Yeah, um, the, let me j just put that up. I will do it um, by using our website. Um, it's Malajesh um, who did it. And uh, well, just give me a second. I'll, I can't talk and type. Otherwise, we'll get, I don't know where. Here. Um, While Klaus types, I will I will say the the website's absolutely fantastic, and and I encourage you all to go for a deeper dive into it. You could easily get lost in there, uh, and it's it's a really useful resource. I will try to share screen again. Um, just give me a second. Um, it's so. Are you? now able to see the website, I hope so. Uh, what you can always do is um, go on this participants um, uh, well, um, button and then go to, in this case, contributors. And you see uh, also many, many people uh, present here, uh, like Peter Moza from the Archives of Rural History. Um, uh, and we have, as I said, let's go down there. Here, uh, that's Molly Zesh. And um, I met him in uh, a uh, meeting on Indian draft animals with Mr. Sadana. Uh, and uh, he um, has some really fascinating ideas as a really like, young and enthusiastic fellow. I don't know if you know him, um, but um, I'm, I would gladly hook you up and uh, I'll start the discussion with um, uh, connecting you and him. Um, yes. Should, should be very happy to talk to him. We also work in the state, Madhya Pradesh. Oh yeah, super. Where he is I thought it's great. Okay. Thank you. I will stop screen sharing again. Uh, and, and Lauren, there's a there's a follow up comment about the the map. Are you happy to come on and explain that? You're still on mute. Oh, I know. There you go. Okay, <laughs> sorry. sorry. I hit the wrong button. Um, yeah, we created a custom map. I'm I'm helping uh, Lena and Klaus with some of the media, and uh, we've created a custom map 
with some of with the participants, but it's not public yet. So we're still working out some of the details and um, it will be available in the future, but you can see where everybody is located. And if you were to cross reference, um, maybe when they put the seed in or when they're doing the cultivation, it's very, it would be very interesting to find out um, uh, when Texas puts their seed in versus Germany, for example. I know that I was, I was just in the Dallas area and Nash farm just so, a week ago and it's still warm i i just returned from dallas last night and it was it was very warm there it was almost summer weather and it's almost christmas so people can put their seed in at different times people would harvest at different times and that's uh, an important aspect about seeing this global uh, view of, of of the same crop i mean uh, even um if you um, leave that crop behind. I mean, the way you plow the land um, can be basically the same for different field crops. So when we talk about different sowing machines, different harrows, different plows, um, this is something which will add up over the years. So I hope that this will be a great resource of well-documented different types of um, farming implements around the world. And this goes um, uh, uh, until um, the question of yoking, um, for example, which is also um, interesting when it comes to the, the traction aspect of things. Can I ask a follow-up question, Klaus, about the resources that you're creating, the sort of content that you're generating? You talked about films, audio recordings, sort of oral history. Um, obviously, with some of those partners, uh, for example, the, the uh, Peter Moser and, and others, there are repositories connected with those partners where those resources might end up. But some of those resources, it sounds like you are creating and generating yourself through uh, interviews that you're con conducting direct from where you are, or 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 with those direct with those partners. Do you have a plan in mind about where those resources will all? end up as well as being a legacy on on the web because obviously we know that you know websites aren't necessarily forever and aren't necessarily a sort of permanent repository um yeah. and is there more to think about in relation the 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 thing for now is um of course um that we will try to publish as much as possible on the website um, but as you already said that uh, can't be the only way to um follow up on that i mean we or i have a, a database basically in mind um, which still needs a lot of time to um get set up to serve all the needs um, we want um, uh, this database to answer, basically. But I think with the growing um, community of this project, um, we will then at some point have a um, project group meeting um, with a specific focus on that particular um, question, and then think about the best way for everybody um, to um, use this source afterwards for um, the purposes um, in mind. But for now, we all store it um, here at our computers and also on a, on a, on a cloud online. So um, it's double saved. And uh, right now it's a lot of work to put all the Intel coming in from the growers together. But I always want, um, maybe we also will also have a published um, digital version of um, a one year wrap up focusing on common wheat in this year and next year, I mean, yeah. Uh, and we also had, and this was, was something brought up by Lauren, um, for example, which is much more than just helping on the website. Um, she's one of the most important partners in this project. Um, she brought up the idea of um, also something like thoughts from the field. Um, so people um, which are um, at their fields sharing ideas and thoughts um, which are connected to the questions we also focus on um, uh, in the year in the field um, uh, when it comes to growing of that particular field crop. So that goes in, into the line of um, that oral history aspect in this case too. Brilliant, thank you. Are there, are there any other questions or thoughts? Carrie Lee's got a comment. Do you want to come in with your comment, Carrie Lee? 
I was just I was just going to riff off Lauren's idea with thoughts from the field. I, I, I love that. And, and that could go in all kinds of directions with recipes from the field or, um, you know, tools. Um, you know, so many of us work with collections um, and perhaps looking at the evolution of, of some of the tools or equipment um, that we've used, but also archival images could be could be um, windows into the field. Um, and different different time areas, and asking people to contribute photos from different uh, different areas and different times. That's actually a great idea. Recipes from the field. I'm expecting one from Canada, right now. All right, <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> I think Lauren, Lauren, you're offering to come in and explain thoughts from the field in in greater depth. That would be wonderful if you could. It, yeah, the the whole idea came out of a conversation that uh, Klaus and I were having offline about. Uh, his ideas about sustainability. And he and and some of his ideas didn't come in directly to the field. And I thought that it was something that people could add other thoughts that were related to the project, but were not exact. And coming up with the idea of thoughts from the field as if this field, this year on the field was sparking another idea. And that way they were connected loosely, but not directly. And that would allow someone's um, imaginations to flow, kind of like recipes from the field. It wasn't exactly related to cultivation of this, but you could present it another way. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about how it could be um, a little video presentation or an audio presentation or other things that do connect, but um, weren't related specifically to the topic. Brilliant, thank you for that. It's such an exciting project and so much rich new direction there that I think we're all looking forward to being involved in, in, in one way or another, whether or not we can get involved practically and grow wheat or, or, or simply share our collections as Kerry Lee suggested or, or otherwise. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how it develops. Uh, and it seems like a sort of a, a new model for perhaps some of the working party activity that, that the IEMA has tried to get off the ground in the past. So I, I wonder Klaus as a sort of closing moment because we're coming to an hour and, and I think there aren't any more questions in the chat whether you might like to comment a little bit about what direction you would like to see the IEMA moving in over the the, the course of your term as president um, and uh, and we can leave it at, at that. Well I haven't prepared a presidential address if you ask that but of course I can give uh, a brief um, uh, thought on how I imagine this to go. I mean, we all learned um, a, a bit the hard way um, that with uh, the ongoing pandemic um, and with the, well, realization that we can't do many of our meetings in person, um, that we need to um, go with the pace and change some of our traditional strategies on how we um, engage with our members uh, within IEMA and also the wider public. And we had a first really, really good um, um, little um, symposium in November of last year, which I really liked, um, also liked to prepare, to prepare it, um, uh, Coping with Crises, where we were able to bring in um, so many different perspectives of how agricultural museums are coping with that crisis, um, uh, which is ongoing. And I imagine much more of these um, digital um, events throughout the years, which make it at least a bit easier for people to access and to be actually um, and practically involved, uh, uh, no matter where they are um, uh, on the globe. So. Um, we will try uh, also using projects like a year in the field to uh, bring in more people um, to, well, bring in more, well, ideas um, on how to basically connect the, the, the great chance we have on, in our museums and with our collections to um, answer questions which are relevant for today, be it sustainability uh, and other things, and uh, make clear that it is a voice 
everybody needs to hear and it's a valuable voice and, and uh, that way if we help even small museums to find their role in that big game um, um, we can um, help them to survive maybe as a small museum because now they're more integrated in this bigger discussion and they get a voice. So public outreach and membership outreach is another thing I want to focus on um, in the in the upcoming years. So maybe that's um, something brief. Um, but um, uh, I think you you will hear not that far um, after the meeting from me again in a, in a written email. Where I will, um, yeah talk about it a little more um, in detail, if you like. Thank you, Klaus. That's, uh, in, in, given that you hadn't prepared any thoughts, you're, you sound very <laughs> prepared to me. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to working with you over the, the coming term and, and looking forward to uh, seeing as many of, of you as possible in, in India in 2023. Um, thank you, everyone. I think that draws our business for today to a close, unless anyone has any other business to raise or questions to ask. Um, so thank you for joining us uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all um, at future IEMA events, online, offline, in person, and otherwise with recipes from the field and thoughts. Okay.